Yes, you're most welcome, brother. Please feel free to ask any questions. Yes. Yes, brother. I have a question. It's actually two parts of question. We say that Islam is a religion of peace, and there is something that seems unfair in Islam. Like uh, the right of women, like the one we mentioned in Surah Nisa also, I think, Ayah 24, and it's about uh, prize and uh, you will get uh, like a woman. Ma so it is about the woman which is uh, is like a slave, which you may, may, there is a fight between Muslim and non-Muslims, and there is a woman behind them, behind like a widow, something like that. You can marry with them, and it is uh, like a, what you earn from your fight, as a, like a slavery, according to my understanding. You, may you explain it or clear? So what's your question regarding that? That is it correct or is it wrong? I, my question is that how a woman can be forced to be married oh. with a Muslim? The brother asked the question that when you have a war and in the war when you take the spoils of war and even in what your right hand possesses, you're allowed, that is Islam, you're allowed to have relationship with your wife and that which your right hand possesses. At that time, at that time it was very common, you know, like how we today also we have in the Western world, you know, having girlfriends is very common, having mistresses is common. In Islam, when you have relationship, you can only have with your wife and that which your right hand possesses. Now, when you have a war, when you have a war, whatever you booty you get, it becomes part of you and what we have prisoners of war, how we have prisoners of war, you know, POW, okay, POW, okay. today we say slave, in Islam, they are called as prisoners of war, normal in technical terms, now compared to prisoners of war of today, and what Islam says, there is a world of a difference, the rights, and the honor, and the treatment, what the slave get in Islam, is far superior to POW. Even if you read the UN, UN Charter, what happens in Guantanamo Bay, you know? No, I don't know. Guantanamo Bay, you don't know? No. Guantanamo Bay, have you heard of Guantanamo Bay? I, ha I never heard about that. Guantanamo Bay, where, you know, the Americans, they put prisoners which are Muslims. Yeah, Allegation. In Guantanamo Bay. Yes, okay. Guantanamo Bay. Okay. You know, so yes, if you I know... Heard about that. Ah, but the Even, position of, sorry to interrupt. Yes, I'm just coming to it. In comparison to prisoners of war, in prisoners of war today, when you catch a prisoner, he's, en he's enslaved in a jail, correct? Yes. Or there may be a camp, he cannot go out. Okay. In Islam, our prisoners of war, they are free. They are free, but they should not run away. They are not enchained. You can use them, you can take work from them, but as compared to prisoners of war, in the modern world, where there's no freedom. They are, they are kept in that jail or in that camp. They aren't allowed to go out. Compared to vis a vis, what happens in an Islamic war when it takes place. And that time when you have prisoners of war, they have got some restriction, but they are, treat, they are treated much better than as compared to kept in the jails. Okay. So if you compare this, okay, it is far more superior. So there is no force in this situation, am I right? No, there's no force. Okay. Let's go to the other part of question. Then what is the jazia? Jazia. As far as second question is concerned, jazia is a tax imposed on the non-Muslims living in a Muslim state for their protection. For example... One question between of this. Wait, one, you pose the okay. question, let me give the answer. Okay. I haven't completed the answer, you want to ask the next question. Let me complete the answer okay. and then you can ask. Okay, I know the way you wish you are talking with the people in your YouTube. No, which, or with I heard so if you know the way you're asking. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> just I remind you that I know that. <laughs> ah, so I'm just complete. So if you have asked okay. the question, I have to complete the question. Okay, I okay. don't know which YouTube is of mine. The correct authentic one or the adulterated one? Most of them are already reviewed and no, I am many of my, for whatever you replied about them. You know, mashallah, many people, yeah. they are using my photograph to propagate wrong things. 
You know? No, I used your photo last around. No, not uh, you. What? Other people have the link. Okay. I just remind no, you that I said to my people ha, that so you as, are going. So as long as Jazia is concerned, it's a tax imposed on non-Muslims living in Islamic state for their protection. Today in most of the countries, if there is a war, you have to go and fight. You have no option. In an Islamic state, Islamic state, in the Khilafat, Every Muslim, if the Khalifa says he has to go and fight, he has no option. He cannot say I'm rich, he cannot say I'm a doctor, he has to go and fight. But for a non-Muslim, he need not go and fight, he's protected. And for this protection, he's paying a small amount. I'm asking you a question. If you're living in a country, whether it be India or any country, and they say pay just a few hundred rupees, <coughs> or maybe pay a few dollars, and you're protected, is that better or you should go on the war field? Which is better? I will prefer to pay you. <laughs> so Jizya tax is a small amount. So, but the it point... Is, and, and this amount is just to agree, okay, fine. We agree that you are the protectors and you'll be protected. You need not go for the war. But the Muslim has no choice. Muslim cannot say, I will pay Jizya. I don't want to go for the war. He has to go. He has no option. If the Khalifa says he has to go, he has to go. For the non-Muslim is protected. So he's more secured. If I am in your position, I would prefer paying some money and staying at home secured rather than going in the battlefield. Yes, but the next question. Okay. It's the same question, actually. I understand for the protection, we have to pay tax or whatever you name it. But according to my understanding, Jazia is a three section. You either should pay or fight or become Muslim. According to my understanding, it means a country like Iran is next to us and they are not Muslims. We should fight with them or they have to pay or they become Muslim. Is that right? No. When, when a Muslim takes over or conquers in any land, if they become a Muslim, then they have no option. They can't pay Jazia. If required, they have to fight in the battlefield. No option. So if you become a so Muslim... They are, in this case, they are forced to pay. Not forced. Not forced. If they become a Muslim, they have no option of Jazia. They have to fight when required. No. If you don't want to accept Islam, then you pay a nominal tax saying that we agree that you are a protectors. This is the fee. That's it. Okay. The question is that like a country like Spain, which is called in Islamic history as Andalus, how Islam spread till that location, <clears throat> it was with force or without force? Today, if you see the history of the world and the history of Islam, today, yes, there were battles fought, but today, the media portrays as though Islam was fed by the sword. Yeah. And the reply to this is given very well by Delisi O'Leary in his book, Islam at the Crossroad, on page number 8. He says, he says, that history makes it clear that the legend of fanatical Muslims sweeping across the world forcing Islam at the point of the sword is the most fantastic, absurd myth that historians ever repeated. It is a myth. Yeah, there have wars been taking place. So, they, so the let point... Me, let, okay. yeah, yeah, just, don't give me, have a debate. just give me a sign that I, no, have, I can start my question. This is a question answer session, okay. not a discussion session, okay. brother. Okay. <laughs> you will go up till the morning. Question, ask the question one. You non-Muslim, I gave you two chants, three chants, four chants, the other people waiting. I am agnostic actually. <coughs> I am thinking, I am ah, reading, ah. I am studying. Agnostic is also non-Muslim only. Yeah. Even agnostic is a non-Muslim. Okay. Inshallah, we pray to Allah to make you a theist, a believer in God, Inshallah. I believe in God. I have no problem no, about the God. If you are agnostic, you cannot believe in God. Actually, That means your English language is a big, weak brother. Agnostic. Actually, is a person who doesn't say there is God and doesn't say there is no God. He's silent. If you say you believe in God, you become a theist. Agnostic means a person mm -hmm. who doesn't believe there is God and doesn't believe there is no God. He's silent. Okay. So actually you are a theist. You yes. believe in God. In, you, in yes. this case you can call me okay, like Okay, so that. coming back, coming back to what I said earlier. Yeah. So you're keeping interrupting it, the whole thing, the answer is going here and there. No, sorry for that. So, I'm listening to you clearly. Uh, so in this, for as long as part of Islam is concerned, today, the country, if you know, the Dilusi already said, it's a myth that Islam was spread by the sword. Yes, there are wars been taking place. There are. But that's not the major spread. 
Today, do you know, in the Arab land, in the Arab land, there are more than, there are about 8 to 9 million Arabs who are Coptic Christians. Who are Christians since generation. You know, we Muslims, the Arabs, they ruled the Arab land for 1400 years. For a few years, the French came. For the few years, the Britishers came. Overall, we have been the Lord. If we wanted, we could have forced every Arab to accept Islam at the point of the sword. These today, Allah. 9 million Arab Christians, they are bearing witness that Islam was inspired by the sword. We Indians, you know, the Muslims ruled India for a thousand years. If we wanted, we could have forced every Indian to accept Islam at the point of the sword. We did not do it. Today, <coughs> today, more than 75% of Indians, they are non-Muslims. These 75% non-Muslim Indians, they are giving shahada, they are bearing witness that Islam was inspired by the sword. Today, the country which has the largest number of Muslims, it's Indonesia. Which Muslim army went to Indonesia? Which Muslim army went to Malaysia, which has 55% Muslims? Which Muslim army went to the east coast of Africa? Senegal, Gambia, they are Muslims. Which Muslim army went there? It is the sword, the sword of intellect. So if you see the history of Islam, the spread, the major was by people because of the deeds, because of the actions, because of business. So today, Islam has spread because of its values, not because of the sword. It's a misconception. Hope that answers the question. I'd like to ask you a question, brother. Yes. Where do you come from? Originally from Iran. From Iran? Yes. You're originally from Iran? Yes. And you say that you're agnostic, now you said you believe in God. I am believing in God, literally, but I am starting from the bottom of heart, what is the word, what is the kainat, whatever. I want to truly believe what I am believing. I would request you to watch my video because it is the Quran God's word. You may have seen many of my videos. This one I didn't see. Huh, so surely walk, go on the YouTube, Zakir Naik channel. Yes. It's in HD, mashallah. Yes, you're in my favorite list also. Mashallah, you're one of the subscribers. <laughs> yes. Good. You know the YouTube gave an award to us. The vice president of YouTube said Dr. Zakir is awesome. So maybe because of your subscription also, mashallah, I got the award. Yeah. So jazakallah. So I request you. So I, I want to be, let me clearly say that after a long study in my life, 30 years old I am, you are the most rational person I have seen in my life. That's Masha. why I came here and this question is from the bottom of my heart. I want to be clear and if I am Mormon, I want to be a clear Mormon. I don't want to be like half then, Mormon, half not Mormon. So like brother, what is stopping you from accepting Allah? Do you believe in Allah? Yes. You believe that He is the most powerful? Yes. He is the only one should be worshipped? Yes. This is then the no one else besides Allah? Yes. Allah, that's the main pillar. Second thing, do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah? I have problem about these things. That's why I am... What's your problem? <laughs> what is your problem? I can help you, brother. Actually, the history which is behind Islam... Sorry? The history which is behind Islam, when we read it, we see something unfair between that. And not un just it. I mean, I cannot feel it is logical. Sister, That's why I am studying brother, to when find... you study history, history is not the right thing to study. I say study Quran. Like the way which you said, I am referring to Quran about Jaziya. In, yes. Jaz in Ayah about, I think, 29 Surah Toba mentioned, they have, it is about Allah, Allah Zina, uh, it is about Ahlul Kitab. It's not about non-Muslim. It's about Ahlul Kitab that have to pay Jaziya. Ahlul Kitab is also non-Muslim, brother. Ahlul Kitab are non-Muslim. They're Christians and Jews. They're okay. non-Muslims. So they have to pay Jaziya. Okay. Same thing. This, protection is, with the small money. It is Qatilul Ladina. Yani fight even killed. That's much going behind See, there. See, when you say about Surah Tawbah, this fighting is talking in the battlefield. Many of the people quote out of context, in the battlefield you have to fight, you cannot sleep. Okay, how it, it, I accept that. And, and, is, is and, that and, and again, people quote out of context. This is a context when people come to kill you. So the people the, in Andalus was trying to kill Muslims. Forget Andalus, I'm not bothered about Andalus, I'm not bothered about India. I'm bothered about Quran and the Sai Hadith. If people in Andalus did some mistake, why should I be held responsible? How I'm Muslim here, go to I, Andalus? I, I am not here to talk about Andalus or talk about Mughals. 
I am here to talk about Quran, Allah, and His Messenger Muhammad. Khalas. Okay. History. If there is a bad Muslim, just because the Muslim is a bad example, why are you blaming Islam for that? See, for example, okay. You want to judge a car, a latest Mercedes car, S 500 in the market. Okay. Latest 2016 model. Fine. Yeah. You want to judge how good the car is. If a person who does not know how to drive the car, drives the car and bangs up the car, who will you blame, the car or the driver? Or of course, driver. Driver! Yeah. So look at the car! Yeah. The car! Yeah, yeah, this is the car. I am referring to Quran for all no, of my study. But Spain, forget about Spain, you are talking Andalus. Okay. There is no Andalus in the Quran. Yes. Huh? Okay, I will read about it. I will think That's about the reason, it. forget about history. It is good for knowledge. Okay. But number one is read the Quran and the Sai Hadith and accept it, inshallah. I pray to Allah to give you that, inshallah. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you for the time for me. Are they non Muslims here on the microphone? We have. Okay.